What's up, Marks? My name is Muscle Man Malcolm, and welcome to the highlights in the week of professional wrestling. This is Talk Malcolm Talk. As we like to do here at Talk Malcolm Talk, we start off this with some happy birthday messages. And this one is more of a controversial one. I respect this man as a wrestler and a wrestler only. Happy birthday to the late Chris Benoit. Big news coming outside the WWE Survivor Series, one of the big four pay-per-views that go on within the year of the WWE, will be held for the first time since the Montreal Screwjob in Canada, in Toronto, on November 20th, 2016. There's no better main event for a Canadian WWE pay-per-view than Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens. And as we all know, at the start of the week, we learned that Emma was injured. She ruptured a disc in her back, and that, that's a painful, painful injury right there. She recently had back surgery, and it was a successful one, thank God, because she will be able to recover and get back to wrestling as soon as possible. So to Emma, I hope you get back as soon as possible in a healthy manner. This week, we also learned that Lana, the Ravishing Russian, made her NXT debut in Largo. Will they actually just put her on NXT, and will she have to really go through that process? Or because she's already on the main roster, will she just do NXT Live events until she's ready and just go straight up there? We don't know, but it's going to be pretty interesting to see. Even more big news coming outside of NXT. At NXT TakeOver, which this might even be better than the Sami Zayn match in Dallas, Shinsuke Nakamura will be going one-on-one -on -one with the greatest man that ever lived, Double A, Austin Aries. Oh, this will be something in the history books. I know that, because that... <laughs> Oh my God. And a little less about wrestling, but it's still about a wrestler. Gold Dust, one half of Golden Truth, has put on Twitter that he has been eight years sober. Within the tweet, he talked about how he was addicted to drugs and alcohol, but it's been eight years since then, and he has been clean ever since. So to Gold Dust, congratulations. That is something that is hard to beat. So for someone to be able to go eight years sober without any relapses, that right there, sir, is amazing. In getting some real mainstream attention into the WWE, we learned that John Cena will be hosting the ESPY Awards, the ESPN, basically the Grammys of sports. Will there ever be another superstar that will be as mainstream as John Cena in the near future? Because do, is Roman Reigns gonna be as mainstream as John Cena in the next 10 years? I don't know. John Cena really brings that mainstream attention to the WWE, something that they really need so they can still continue to push their product that way. As they build new guys, more people will be watching. So to John Cena hosting the ESPY Awards, that is amazing. And I hope in the near future, we will have another guy that will be able to bring that mainstream presence as much as John Cena or Dwayne Johnson. I'm sorry, bro. Okay, fame met the rock. Now, this is a more uh, darker subject. We have learned that Jimmy Snuka has testified on stand about the case of his girlfriend's murder. Now, to make sure that I don't mess up anything within that article that I read, I want you guys to go read it for yourself. And there's a video that was produced in September 2015, so if any facts don't match up to the current situation, it's because it was taped a long time ago. So, I will leave the article from CBS News right down there, first link and the video as well. But the spark notes from it that he was just mentally just not there. He doesn't know who the president is. He doesn't know the presidential candidates. I would don't want to know who they are either. And from other logistics, and I could be wrong saying this, that he doesn't even know that he was in the courtroom at the time. It was just basically the story going into this. And maybe it's the truth because hey, wrestling takes a big toll on your body that he doesn't really know about anything. He doesn't remember what happened. I honestly hope that he didn't have anything to do with it, but looking at the situation of what happened, there's a good chance he could have, but that's for you guys to make your opinion on. This week was also the anniversary of the death of Macho Man Randy Savage. Every promo he did, his matches, they were all amazing. There was really, there's almost nothing wrong with the Macho Man. He was almost like, the perfect wrestler. I love the Macho Man so much that I customized his logo design on my powerlifting singlet. Here's a picture of it. To the Macho Man, I say rest in peace because you are by far the greatest superstar of all time. UFC star Seth, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but it's right here. Has been hired as a new striking coach at the WWE Performance Center. To learn more about why he was released from the UFC and how he got hired from the WWE, here's an article in the second link 
in the description. There's been another big milestone in WWE. Kevin Owens has been the second superstar within his first year of the company to compete on the main card of every single pay-per-view, with the first being The Undertaker. We're going outside the WWE. Now we're gonna be talking about TNA. So this week on TNA Impact Wrestling, we saw the main event of Bobby Lashley, or just Lashley, taking on the world champion for the world title, Drew Galloway, in a lumberjack match. And the viewership numbers went up by almost 100,000 more people than it did last week at 208,000 views. Also, by the way, Matt Hardy, new gimmick, I like it. And we're still talking about TNA. So the Lucha Libre Cup is about to happen. In the USA team, the team will consist of three TNA superstars. Superstars? I think they're called superstars. EC3, Tyrus, and Eli Drake, which is amazing to see Eli Drake get up there. I actually really like the whole Eli Drake gimmick, by the way. The whole this talk show on TNA is amazing. I like it. And <laughs> hey, this guy will be the future of that company. Now for ROH, my favorite Women of Honor wrestler, Mandy Leone, did a Q&A this week, which talks about women's wrestling and, of course, the Ring of Honor women's division, Women of Honor. And that link will be the third in the description. She's definitely going to be the future of women's wrestling. In due time, she will get picked up by the WWE. I met Mandy a lot of times. She's definitely, definitely one of the nicest people and wrestlers you will ever meet. All best wishes. The last thing we're gonna talk about is New Japan Pro Wrestling. The best of the Super Juniors tournament is about to get on their way starting today and through June 7th, 2016. And some of the competitors that will be in there are gonna be amazing. It really makes WWE's Global Cruiserweight Series Maybe looks like second place. We have guys like Kyle O'Reilly, Matt Seidel, Bobby Fish, Ricochet, and plenty of more of the greatest wrestlers on the independent scene at the moment. And that sums up this video. Hope you guys really enjoyed. Come back every Saturday morning at 10 o'clock a.m. for the highlights and the rumors and the news in the week of professional wrestling. I'm Muscle Man Malcolm, marking out 24-7. See you later.